I would now invite uh, Ms. Mani Meghale to come up on stage. Um, the Department of Dietetics at CMC for many decades has been an outstanding one which the clinicians look up to for advice. We are privileged to have the lecturer in charge of the department, Ms. Mani Meghale, who is also the department quality manager to join us. She course coordinates the PG Diploma course in Dietetics at CMC Vello. Very good evening, everybody. Respected chair, respected speakers, dear colleagues. Once again, a very good evening and greetings from CMC Value, Shock on 2019. It's my, it's my immense pleasure to be part of this beautiful venture, and I honestly thank Lalumam for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, when I just looked at the program's schedule, I was really worried. Mine was, you know, last presentation. And again, end of the show. Then I just looked at, thank God, NS Ma'am is with me. So, three-fourth crowd of our lovely, lively nurses will be staying with us. <laughs> but, you know, like, fortunately, the whole auditorium is full. So, I'm really glad to, you know, uh, to be present in front of you people. And, you know, one more thing also, why I'm lovely, lively, many of the time our nurses save from patients. You know, like, the patients will be shouting, what, madam, what food you have given? But most of them say, money, cool. I have convinced the patient, you don't worry. So most of the time, our nurses, they try to patch up and they try to save, and I'm really very thankful for them. Without nurses, we cannot survive. Hope everybody will agree. Nobody denies this. So I think, Vijay sir, I think one minute is over now. The next nine minutes. One and a half. <laughs> one and a half is over, oh my god. So we have a punching system in our department, so I will, I will take two more minutes, delay. Okay, so I'll be sharing the challenges, what we faced during the implementation of you know, nutritional assessment after NABH uh, pre-assessment. Whenever Lalu Ma'am comes to our department, I honestly say, Ma'am, please don't mind. Oh my God, this madam is coming. What is the new task she's going to assign today? How long we are going to stay here? Because our department, honestly, I'm telling again, it was one big zero. Because we do give quality care to our patients, but nowhere nothing is documented. We give beautiful intervention, beautiful diabetic diet, beautiful renal diet, but nothing was documented in the patient chart, which was a big challenge for us to initiate this NABH process. So the journey towards accreditation was not really very easy for our department due to the lack of manpower crisis. We have only 12 dietitians, and most of the time, 75% will be filled, rest will be Kali. And one junior will come. The moment we think, oh, she is the one who is going to relieve us from the workload. We, we sincerely teach everything. By the time, beautifully, she will plan everything. She will start planning, you know, pediatric diet, diabetic diet, renal diet. She'll say, tata, bye-bye, and go. We work very hard to train them. End of two years, they'll take nice CMC certificate, and, they'll, and, and then one day, they find day, they'll call me, ma'am, I'm taking one lakh salary. When we look at our package, it's so minimum. So it was really very challenging. Uh, so let me explain the challenges one by one based on the standards because we really worked hard to meet up the standards which has been given by NABH again. So hope you all agree with me about one third of patients entering the hospitals are malnourished with even more becoming malnourished during their hospital stay. Hundreds of studies over the past 40 years have proven that malnutrition among patients impact both health and economic outcomes. So why do we have to do? We need to find out who are already malnourished or who are you know, at risk of developing malnutrition. And though nutritional intervention is the integral part of the medical care team, most of the time it is either overlooked or completely neglected. And we have got certain wards in our hospital, not now. I'm talking about way back, so don't mistake me. Sister, patient is there in the ambulance. Could you please come and educate? Because we don't give education on time. So by the time the patient just goes out of the ward, the nurses require, and I have experience, I have gone to the ambulance and explained diet education. So now everything is being sorted out and we have got a beautiful system now to go on. So the first challenge is nutritional screening. So the assessors were very strict and they said screening should be done by the dietitians. Then we have only 12. 
and that too, you know, nine or 10 will be just working. So we try to explore ourselves to figure out the guidelines for the nutrition screening, and most of the guidelines says it should be done by the doctors. Thank God we are saved. So as usual, nurse, nurses, you know, they just started sharing the burden of the doctors and they started doing the screening. So initially, after the admission, they will just do the screening. Later, the doctor screens the patients and then give appropriate diet. So this is, you know, uh, when we just started, the complaints was very bad, I think 30, 40%. Now it is, every three months, KMC, they does audit. Now it is more 99, the last audit is 99% doctors prescribes diet in the patient's chart. So the second assessment, again, every patient who comes into the hospital should be assessed by the dietitian. That is, again, a big challenge for us because we don't have dietitians. The Indian Dietetic Association, what they say is, one is to 40 in the wards and one is to 25 in ICUs. But imagine the number of patients who get admitted in, in our institution. We can't have that much number. The present scenario is really, really very pathetic. The number of dietitian patient ratio is very less across nation. So number of dietitians have to be increased to deliver a more constructive nutritional assessment. So the next second policy, nutrition therapy is planned and, collab and you know, provided in a collaborative manner. So all the thera therapeutic diets were beautifully prescribed by the doctor, but as I said earlier, 100% complaints was not there. So after, you know, just started this process, now it is 99%. Though our doctors are too busy and loaded with patients, they just make a point to, you know, prescribe appropriate diets for the patient because unless doctor prescribes the diet, the nurses will not order the diet. The senses will become very critical. So doctors have to order, I mean, prescribe, nurses have to order. The second challenge is many of the hospital diet is not compulsory and we do have such policy in our hospital. So if patient request, request hospital diet, the, uh, you know, the prescription is ordered by the nursing team and it is translated into diet by dietetics team for all IP patients and then, then we follow the patients diligently till the discharge. So again, most of the time, 50% is juniors and only 50%, not even 50% senior. So we really was worried whether the intervention is being put up by the juniors are right or at least appropriate or, you know, just to make sure we made frequent visits, you know, like for the senior dietitians to go along with the junior dietitians to make sure whether appropriate diet is being given for the patient. The third challenge is if on diet, no problem, beautifully the system will flow. If not on diet, how do we go about? Because the assessor is very particular that every patient should be assessed by the dietitian. So what we just made some policies, you know, in, 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 you know in, after discussing with QMC, then we just come up with certain protocols that even if they are not on diet, the patients who gets admitted, you know, under cardiology, nephrology, and uh, one more specialty, uh, endocrinology. So these three specialties, we, we just make a point to whether they are on hospital diet or not on hospital diet, we just started. And also the doctors, if it's really needed, they prescribe the, uh, diets for the patients. And we just go to the ward and bedside and we just give diet education within 24 to 48 hours. And this time frame is too short. So we should have a tracking system whether it's been delivered on time or not. So monitoring is very, very important. Third is there is a written order. Yes, there is a beautiful written order. The dietitian will prepare this order in a form of a diet sheet and the patient will receive diet accordingly. Whereas this was not completely not documented in the patient's chart. So after pre-assessment, nutrition record form was developed by our department and started documenting the intervention in the patient's chart. So this, uh, I didn't zoom because like doctors, even dietitians also should improve their hand handwriting. So it's so bad actually. So fourth one is patient receive food according to their clinical needs. Again, it's not compulsory. The food is not compulsory in the campus. So it becomes very hard for the dietitians to make sure whether the patient eats appropriate, which I have already uh, narrated earlier. All the specialties we just started seeing, if not on diet, we just get the referral from the doctors and we just immediately attend patients. The other one is if the patient requires a normal diet. We need to give some education, but we don't have adequate personnel. So we just worked out a lot of brochures on, you know, wellness diet for pregnant ladies, lactating mothers, for children. We just worked out a lot of brochures and we started giving. As I said earlier, beautifully our nursing team is organizing wherever IP or OP, they make sure this brochure goes to the patients. These are some of the brochures what we have worked out after pre-assessment. 
the fifth one is food is prepared handled stored and distributed in a safe manner this uh, sort of uh, we didn't find much difficult but uh, many a time we do get complaints from the ward you know like madam i'm getting garlic flavor in the musambi juice so when we just go back and look at we used to have wooden boards so the person you know like who cuts the vegetables or you know any other you know onion garlic in the same board he cuts everything fruits vegetables everything was cut so that you know like we just wanted to prevent cross contamination so all hygienic principles lot of protocols we have made now you know it's i would say 200 person hygiene is followed taste i cannot give guarantee because taste perception is highly individualized and moreover in the year of 2000 Uh, for our department was outsourced the moment we just heard the news we were very happy thank god we are coming out of the kitchen but it's really really tough to handle a outsourced group we have to work more than we run the own show and also hospital food service unique its unit unique in its nature because we don't get soul free diets we don't get renal diet anywhere only it is available in dietary kitchen so what we thought only the manager or only the hospital dietetics team is not enough to monitor the hygienic aspects so we have appointed a health safety environment quality manager to look after all these aspects which is working fine in our department now then the important challenge when families provide diet they are educated about the patient's diet limitations though we dietitians nurses nurses they spend lot of time with the patients sir don't eat this don't eat that doctors also do tell lot of things about diet but still you know like sometimes they go out of the way and they just start consume as they wish so it's very very important for the dietitian respect to what dietitian to go explain the dietary restrictions to the patients as well as to the relatives and it's a big very big hospital one week one relative will be there second week the other relative will come third week the other relative so it's a very big challenge so we just make a point to visit the uh, patients and the relatives alternate days and we just explain again and again so we thought this is not enough so we have appointed again one more personnel called the guest relation relation executive uh their role will be striving towards attending all the possible food related needs to the best of the ability in concurrence with the dietitian and tries to make a long lasting impression to the patients day before yesterday also i just we had lot of groups in the department staff group is there dietitian group is there and if retired staff gets admitted i'll just get a list who is getting admitted so day before yesterday we have got lovely anand bhavan sweet from a patient uh thank you sweet so the third one is uh dietitian speaks nurses speaks doctor speaks guest relation executive speaks but still it is not adequate so what we have worked out is plate based audits these are a quick audit which helps to you know find out what kind of food goes uneaten by the patients in a healthcare setup the data gained from an audit can help the hospital kitchen to develop specific strategies to reduce the plate waste most importantly the audits identify why the patients are not eating certain food items and bring in a change to closely look at the menu design so these are the three important things which helps to you know uh, make sure that we give right food to the patients so challenges forever dealing with people is an art dealing with patients dealing with relatives uh, dealing with doctors dealing with nurses dealing with our own dietitians It's, it's very challenging so it's really very important to end our inertia and get moving and huge crowd of patients we are always overloaded with the patients but that becomes a practice and culture for us but still our institution our administration is making lot of you know like uh, you know like uh, uh, systems to keep it in place so that we can deliver a better care for our patients and documentation that's a big challenge even today because as uh, i think sunil sir said here we have to document the same thing the other paper same thing the other paper same thing the other paper so in four places we have to document the same thing and finally the training training is not just enough uh, continuous training is very very important so that we don't forget even everything uh, we don't forget uh, things and we keep update ourselves because again god google tells everything to the patients i have to find something which is not the god is telling to the patient so training is mandatory for all so this is i hope uh, our institution we are just trying to do this not just showing equality not just treating everybody same we need to give some fairness justice to all our patients and that should be the goal of any healthcare system in india and all over world finally as there is nothing training cannot do nothing is above its reach 
Training can turn bad moral to good, destroy bad principles and recreate good ones. It can lift everyone to perform excellence. And I take uh, this forum as an opportunity to thank my senior and junior staff because they have relieved us for three days to organize this wonderful, beautiful show. And also, you know, they, uh, I thank uh, uh, wholeheartedly to, you know, like all my senior and junior dietitians to deliver better care to our patients. Thank you.